Well, hey, everybody, Mike Schindler here with the Military Wire. Welcome back to the Military Wire. I'm excited about this episode. This one, we're, we've got two amazing guests. We've got Sean Casey with Comcast, uh, who we're going to be diving into. And we've got a former senior Navy lieutenant, served in Vietnam, Bill Moore, who is going to give us some insight into the movie uh, and his part of what he played in, in the Gunslingers, part of the gun Gunslinger Squadron in Vietnam. Uh, but this is really going to be an interview where we kind of break down this Sky High reunion, uh, which is really cool. Share some brave stories. And what uh, what Comcast is doing with this new feature called The Aviators. So we're going to unpack that. Uh, and we want, we're want we going to encourage you guys to really explore that. So, uh, guys, welcome to the show. Thank you. Thank you for having me, Mike. I appreciate it. Yeah, excited to have you guys. So, Sean, I'm going to start with you, and I'm going to bounce back and forth between you guys. But uh, this new uh, show, really, The Aviators, I want to unpack that a little bit. Uh, but before I do, I want to kind of go into what Comcast is doing with our military uh, families, our veteran families, because Comcast has been really devoted. I think oftentimes people miss that. But kind of share with us kind of Comcast's new military benefits program and and the overall commitment Comcast has to our veteran community. Share with us a little bit about that. Sure, I'd be happy to. So, you know, Comcast's connection to, to the military started with our, our founder, Ralph Roberts, who who served in the Navy in World War II. Uh, in fact, he he worked uh, just down the street here in Philadelphia at the at the Navy shipyard. So uh, many of those vessels that were built, uh, many of them were shipped off to to the Pacific. And you know, since then, you know, a lot of our very influential leaders throughout the decades, you know, have have come from the military community. And so we, as a company. Um, you know, really have really invested in that. And so about several years ago, about seven or eight years ago, our company founded its military and veteran affairs team, which which I'm fortunate enough to, to be a part of. And, and our team's role is to work with our peers, whether it be at headquarters or with the Xfinity brand or, or some of our other products and brands, you know, throughout the company. And just figure out, are there strategies in which, you know, it's either engaging military customers or military connected or interested viewers, like through our NBC and, and Universal teams, um, or also from an internal side, you know, we really value military talent, people with that experience, you know, regardless of your branch of service, we understand that and, and really under, have awareness of the skills that those types of individuals bring to an organization, whether it be strong work ethic, uh, a lot of self-discipline, uh, teamwork. Um, and so we have pretty robust military hiring programs. And uh, so about 21,000 veterans, National Guard and Reserve Service members and military spouses have been hired uh, across our enterprise just in the past seven years alone. And so- wow. You know, we we really try to look at it from from a holistic perspective, and so with this this year, uh, with Military Appreciation Month coming up, uh, we thought it would be the perfect time for us to announce our new Xfinity Military Customer Benefits. Uh, so you know, Xfinity, which is our our home um, internet, video, uh, home security, uh, and then along with Xfinity Mobile, our mobile services side. So if you could be, if you're a verified military customer, so you could be a veteran, National Guard and Reserve Service member, an active duty service member, a military spouse, uh, you can qualify for these benefits. So it's it's a hundred and eighty dollar uh, virtual prepaid card that we just give to you. Uh, when you add an Xfinity Mobile line, that line is free for a year. And mm -hmm. then the third part wow. is. When you become a customer, we automatically put you at our diamond tier reward status. So what does that mean? Uh, diamond tier is reserved for, uh, it's our customer loyalty program. And when you're a diamond tier, you've, you've been a customer for 14 or plus years. If you're a military customer, you get automatically put at that status. And that gets you free Peacock Premium, which is our, our streaming service through NBC Universal. Um, and then all the top tier rewards and benefits that come along with that. And it's just our way to, one, 
meet the needs of our military community customers. Um, you know, I'm I'm still uh, in the army and and as a reservist, and I can't tell you the amount of business that's done through our cell phones. And plenty of my friends that are on active duty, that's their primary mode of communication with their troops yeah. and and their staffs. And so we know how important mobile connectivity is. So it's just our way to one help those service members stay connected. And then it's our way to really say thank you to those military families and those veterans out there just to showcase our our appreciation for them um, and helping them stay connected through our services. Wow. It's so impressive. I mean, it's uh, I love that the founder is Navy, of course. Uh, <laughs> you know, I mean, that's always good. You know, Bill, you and I can, you know, we can celebrate that fact, right? He had vision. Absolutely. Uh, yeah. It's um, I, I want to jump to the film. Uh, knowing all the things that Comcast is doing, but and Sean, I'll, I'll jump with you. Start. I, I want to start with you on this because, you know, Comcast. This is kind of an inspiration, you know, and Comcast kind of inspired this whole thing. It, so, how did the film? How did you guys even come up with this idea of doing the film? Number one, to produce the Aviators. Uh, walk us through that, and and obviously it aligns with your guys's values. But what inspired you guys to do that? Sure. So. But, you know, we know that, you know, we're an internet and video service provider on the Xfinity, uh, through Xfinity. And so we know that there's a lot of those connections that people can maintain with ourselves, that, that those things are happening on the, on the service that we provide. And so when we, when we look to, you know, showcase the Xfinity brand, we want to elevate those stories. And one of the things that we're, so many of us here at the company are, are well aware of is that uh, the military community stays connected in, mm -hmm. in those deep connections. You know, I have two brothers and I love them to death, uh, but I also have another set of brothers that those are the, the folks that I've served with. And there's a unique bond that gets built between individuals that have served together. And so we really wanted to showcase those deep bonds that that we knew uh, people have, and that so many other Americans share. You know, whether your grandfather served, or your mother served, or what have you, the military community really understands those that unique connection, those unique bonds uh, between one another. And so that actually manifested in our our advertising partner, Goodby Silverstein and Partners, uh, their creative director. Uh, his father uh, was a pilot, and he remembers times when his sons would put a VR headset on his father so he could fly again. And that's really mm. it, it's a it's a true inspiration for this story. Um, so that was the genesis from it. And then we went to work figuring out, all right, if we're going to tell this story, we need to make sure it's authentic. We need to make sure that anybody from the military community that's watching this can't pick out some of the um, some of the inaccuracies or whatnot. We really <laughs> wanted to make sure that this looked yeah. and felt real. And that's how we came across Bill and, and his peers. Wow. So great. Bill, you've been so patient, just kind of waiting here and, and, and listening to, to, to ramble on. But it, so what was it like? So you get a reunite, right, with your squadron on the set of the aviators. Um, how does how did that experience how was that experience number one kind of this whole reunion bit and uh, what did it bring up as far as memories of that time well the um one of the difficult items is that the navy is really important to me yeah. but i've been out of it for years um jim lloyd uh, and jack gillette are people i flew with in vietnam and it isn't that we talk every day, but we've we've kept in touch, and we've actually only been together probably three times in the last fifty years. Wow. So on a Thursday afternoon, I got a call from Jim Lloyd, and he said, "Say, I need to get a couple of our squadron mates together, and we need to do a Zoom call with I. I don't even remember who now. It doesn't matter. I said, "Okay, I'll be there." So we did that and uh, got done with it. And I sat back and thought nothing of it. Friday, I got a call and it said, well, you have to be in uh, New York on Sunday. 
And uh, so I went. I actually, at that time, I'm not sure I ever asked Jim what it was really about. But mm. he, if it's the same thing. The people that you worked with, certainly in Vietnam, if any of them called, I'd go. It, it, it yeah. really wouldn't matter what it is that they were asking. Mm. Yeah. You know, those are the 3 a.m. friends, right, Bill? You know, the, the ones that, you know, you got your... 6 p.m. friends and you get your 3 a.m. friends and I think, yes, you know very good your your 3 a.m. friends are the ones that no matter what they wait yeah hey just come to New York you're on a plane you go sure walk us through a little bit you know Vietnam was uh, it, it, you know that was a it was kind of a blemish in many people's minds in America it, it no reflection of those who served uh, my dad served in Vietnam mm -hmm. um Talk to us about flying in Vietnam. I mean, talk to us a little bit about the Gunslinger Squadron. I mean, what what did you guys do? And, uh, well, we were an East Coast carrier, so we actually weren't planning on going to Vietnam. And I was uh, on vacation with my oldest son, who was really young then, and we were down in, in uh, Miami. And the newspaper said, gosh, is the Saratoga going to Vietnam? And I told Jenny, no. We're not going to be, we're going to the Med here in another two weeks. So finally, I don't know, after I finished breakfast, I called the ready room and I said, oh, we leave in the morning. And so we ran back, got her a ticket to go back to Portland, Oregon. And my neighbor took me down. And I don't think I actually got up until we were well off to sea someplace. I don't remember mm -hmm. leaving Mayport at any rate. Um, it's easy for me to just rattle on. The Vietnam experience was, uh, I, I don't wish it on anybody, but yeah. I'm awfully good, glad that I had it because it's impacted everything I've done since then. Mm. What happened to us when we finally got there, most of the air campaign had been moved. Not It hadn't always been there, but it had been moved back to the South Vietnam. So when we got there, uh, they decided that, my golly, we were going to go back north. So I've got 150 missions, and wow. 10 of them were in the south, and wow. all the rest were north. So uh, that's where we spent um, the whole, our, our, our year there anyway, or 14 months or whatever. Yeah. It ended up being. Wow. Um, and... In North Vietnam, not clear through to the south, North Vietnam had more surface-to-air missile sites than the entire United States. And it's concentrated in an area smaller than Florida. So you couldn't fly in North Vietnam without being in the missile envelope. Mm. Uh, it isn't that they shot missiles every day because I think they were expensive. But nonetheless... Uh, it was always there. And a lot of times trying to avoid missiles would, would put you in the AAA. So you didn't go, I never made a flight that somebody didn't shoot at us anyway. Wow. So, wow. Uh, when, yeah, it was talk to me a little bit about that, Bill. I mean, you, you've experienced both real combat um, and it's recreation in the film, I mean, for that matter. But what what are your thoughts on how the aviators represent that whole experience. How, how did they do? Well, the film I thought was spectacular. Uh, when we were making it, I'm very tall. And in fact, I cheated to get into the airplane. Um, <laughs> you'd go for a physical and they say, stand up straight. And I'd pull my head down and they'd say, well, okay. They needed pilots from Vietnam at the time, I guess. Yeah. Uh, but I was doing it just to stay out of aircraft, or not aircraft, but submarines. Uh, and then I've flown ever ever since. I sold my last airplane in 2010, I think. So I had 40 plus years of flying. Uh, but the film was really well done. And uh, whoever edited it got rid of a lot of the scenes where I looked like a Neanderthal. So I appreciated that. <laughs> That's so great. That's so great. What, what was there any emotional impact um, of participating in a film that uh, 
uses VR technology to recreate the flying experience. I mean, walk us through that. What was that the, like? The, the VR experience, They the first day that we were on the uh, set, no, that's not right. The first day that we got out of New York City, at any rate, we went out and we got to try the uh, goggles and I had never done it before. And the flying is, and the visual is absolutely spectacular. Hmm. Uh, I subsequently have a set of goggles and I have to tell you that my sons and grandchildren fly it better than I do. And I think that's because I don't have as much of a physical sensation, but yeah. my golly, Jack Gillette in our group, I think he had to stop because he started to get airsick. So it's real. It is it's really, right? really real. Yeah. Wow. How cool is that? How cool is that? We, I, want, I want to jump back over to you, Sean. Um, so how does Comcast plan to use technology like VR uh, to enhance experiences for veterans in the future? I mean, you guys are so committed. We all know this about Comcast. Is there any plans to use VR to yeah, I mean, we enhance you know, experiences for vets. You know, we're we're certainly aware and in, in keeping our eye on, um, you know, especially like the VA and some of the research that they're doing, some of the therapeutic uh, components yeah. of of using the technology to facilitate uh, different types of therapy. Um, and certainly, you know, when, when we look at that, we have to look at it from from end to end of like, well, you have one the device. So, what does the device need to be able to do? Uh, what is the end user experience? Because a lot of the driving factors behind that is going to be their internet connectivity. Yeah. So, you know, anytime a, a new piece of technology, you know, hardware, if you will, is is introduced to the market um, and that there's a, a, a large scale adoption, you know, when we think of VR, a lot of times we think of in the entertainment space with with video yeah. games. And, and there's certainly a, a lot of uptick in that. But, you know, the the applications of the technology are are incredible when you look at the medical field, therapy. I mean, um, I just read an article recently that uh, the Marine Corps is looking to use VR to help with uh, field maintenance. So you've got a downed vehicle in theater and a qualified uh, maintainer may not be available. Well, if they can put on a VR headset and, and somehow walk themselves through that vehicle to figure, to teach or to communicate to the end users of like, hey, here's how you fix this. I mean, that's that's an incredible wow. application yeah. of, of the technology. And so we're keeping our eye on that, especially when we look at accessibility. Um, in the veteran space, this is certainly something in which uh, we're really paying attention to because um, about 25% of the total veteran population has a service connected disability. And this is me speaking. I think that's probably higher. Those are just folks that have gone to the VA and, and gotten a, a, a disability rating. Uh, when you look at the post 9-11 veteran population, that's at 40 plus service connected disabilities. Wow. Yeah. Um, and so when we look at, especially folks that were physically healthy and whatnot. And then, you know, later in life are moving through the world differently. Um, we got to figure out as a media and technology company, well, what is their experience like? How are they going to be able to use our services? Um, how are they going to be able to enjoy the entertainment or the different type of media experiences that we put out? So we're, we're really paying attention to that. Um, and one of the things with disabled veterans is that, you know, if, you know, for myself, and I'm very open about this, my hearing is starting to to really be severely degraded yeah. uh, due to my military experiences. And so I know closed captioning is is an absolute necessary, it's an absolutely necessary thing for me uh, to be able to enjoy uh, certain, certain experiences on a screen. Um, and so that application is, wasn't necessarily built for a disabled veteran, but we know that the in the at the end it's still going to benefit me. So we we just see that uh, in the world of accessibility, paying attention to 
um, such a high population of individuals who have become disabled, like post 9-11 mm -hmm. uh, veterans, uh, what do we need to do? Because, you know, that generation is, they're a young generation, right? Yeah. Um, and yeah. so they're going to be living long lives. So how are they going to have fruitful, long lives um, and being able to, especially interact in a in a technology world, right? We're in the, we're in the, we're very deep into the digital age. So it's not going anywhere. So yeah. we need to, we as a, we need to be contributors to help find those solutions. Yeah. Well, how cool is it that you guys were able to even equip Bill and, you know, Bill, you experienced that too, right? You know, the, the goggles, uh, which is just crazy. Um, how, how do you think, Bill, like storytelling, storytelling is so important, right? I mean, it's, you know, we sit around campfires and tell stories when we get together and, and do things like that. But how do you think like storytelling in the film, like the aviators, affects the public's um, understanding of military and veteran issues? I think because of the Vietnam experience. Yeah. I have a wish that I think the news right now uh, we've got demonstrations in college and things. Yeah. Uh, and um, if I had a wish from all of this, it would be that um, our military is an instrument of our government. And it's really disappointing, or it will be disappointing, if we somehow put a negative connotation on the military because of I have no problem. We're fighting to make sure that they can state and demonstrate and have their political opinion. Yeah, but that isn't the, the. I promise you, all the guys I flew with, uh, we didn't sit around a lot, worrying about much of anything except uh, getting up and doing the job the next day. Yeah, I have actually never volunteered for a mission, but I was a senior lieutenant section leader, and I did them all. Um, I didn't tell anybody I didn't want to do them. I just wasn't going to choose the, the, the yeah. Expression. Yeah. I don't want to see, uh, I, I have no problem with political demonstrations. I just don't want to see in the future, um, the population to label that to the military, somehow associate them as being the culprit. They're an instrument of our government. And uh, they should be respected for that. Yeah, yeah. Well, what what an era too. Um, you know, the film, it, Sean. For for you being a part of that whole project, the Aviators. Um, what has kind of been the most rewarding aspect of being a part of that, and seeing it come to life? And what do you hope viewers take away from it? So there's 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 two takeaways for for me. Um, the first one is in going back to the the topic of of storytelling. Yeah. You know what this, what would the 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 purpose of of the story was to show the way that technology that you know these men that have built these connections these deep connections that have lasted decades right and and we have the proof right here with Bill, Jack and Jim. Um, and then we can't forget a Lester who's, who's also, uh, uh, a yeah. veteran that's, that's in the ad. And, and he voiced the same thing with about his peers that he served with, um, that, you know, technology can help those individuals be able to kind of touch their youth again, right? Mm -hmm. There is something exhilarating yeah. about the military experience, right? Um, there is a, at least for me personally, and I know, for many of my friends, th there is a bit of nostalgia, right? That's associated with some of those experiences that we had back in the day. And so if we're able to kind of touch those a little bit, right? Just get a, a little flavor of it again. Um, it's it's exhilarating. The other component is, is when you see the young girl connecting with her grandfather, who before just being able to verbally tell stories of his service, and then she's able to see through technology, her grandfather and these connections with these other men played out in real time in front mm. of her. Yeah. It can build that stronger bond between generations because it can build understanding, right? There's only so much we can get out of a textbook or, or other pieces of media, but having that interpersonal connection be elevated uh, through technology um, 
it's it's pretty remarkable. So that's that's the first part. The second part for me, you know, I've I've been in the army for 20 plus years. I continue to serve. And there was a lot of people that that were associated with this project, a lot of different teams. And what was really fulfilling for me is that Bill, Jim, Jack, and Alester, both all of them individually mentioned to me that every single individual that they interacted with throughout this whole process treated those gentlemen with nothing but dignity mm-hmm. and the respect that they deserve. Yeah. And for me, that's so fulfilling of knowing that the teams that I'm working with or associated with would treat my brothers, my veteran brothers that way. Um, it's just really special for, for me as, as an individual. Yeah. That's really cool. That's really I cool. Got, I, I can echo one thing. Yeah. Um, the other real benefit out of this now that it is out is that this is a story my, my sons have never heard. And mm. so it's been a huge platform for that. I can tell you the reason is that when you think about your family, you don't sit around on Thanksgiving and tell war stories. Right. And so consequently, we just never got around to it. So it's been a huge communication for myself and my, and my well, my sons and then my grandchildren. Yeah. What a cool part of the legacy too, Bill, when you think about it, right? For them to see how you were part of helping, you know, make the world a better place in, you know, oftentimes they see movies and, you know, they equate actors to roles, but wow, dad or grandpa was, he was that person. That's amazing. Right. I mean, that's, I think that's the part that uh, our kids and the younger generation sometimes just don't equate that, or there's real people that actually do real things. I can promise you that other than Alistair, uh, Jim and myself and uh, Jack, we certainly weren't actors. Yeah. Yeah. Bill, what was your biggest takeaway from this whole experience for you? Uh, I think uh, probably, um, again, Sean mentioned part of it. I have never been treated so well as I were by the entire crew. Mm. Uh, um, Overheard something we were doing the uh, we we did the filming in October and then we came back and and got to see the finished product uh, here a couple of weeks ago now uh, and our wives were with us then um, but um, I I can't thank them enough for how well we were treated and um, it's for me at any rate it was the first time I really felt the appreciation uh, there wow. was one aside I can give you. Uh, at one time we were sitting, waiting probably for something. And uh, a couple of the young ladies that were helping guide us around and uh, all of our families were sitting there. And I heard one of them say, I didn't know they were that old. And uh, what I can tell her is, I didn't know that everybody was that young. I didn't feel old until I made this uh, film. Yeah, yeah. You know what, Bill, you know, the big the big takeaway I, I get from your piece right there is it's so important for us as humans when we interact with people out in the world that we just treat people right, right mm-hmm. at the end of the day, that we just don't know the story behind those eyeballs and we don't know the impact, um, the victories, the challenges, the things that that, that person is, is overcome. So, you know, I, I'm glad that Comcast took great care of you and what a reflection on opportunity for the rest of the world to just be better people to each other. So yeah, what Thank a you. what a great, what a great reminder. Sean, I want I want to end with you because of all the great work that Comcast does. I mean, how do people really engage with the aviators? How do they engage with Comcast? I mean, people want to, I'm sure people will want to dive into both. So how do they do that? Sure, absolutely. So um one, if you if you want to learn more about the Xfinity military customer benefits, uh, just head to xfinity.com backslash military. And it has all the information there for, for folks to take a look at. Uh, if you're interested in a lot of our other military engagement work, just go to um, corporate.comcast.com and search military. Tons of news and information just about how we serve communities. Uh, we work do a lot of work in the digital equity space to ensure that 
uh, underserved veteran and military community populations can stay connected to the internet. Um, and to enjoy the aviators, uh, just go to Xfinity's YouTube page. Uh, the, the entire film is there, the long form version of, of the film. Um, and there's also a great behind the scenes, like mini documentary. So you get to see uh, a lot of the creators behind this, including Catherine Bigelow, you know, an, an mm -hmm. Oscar winning director uh, who, who really brought this all together. Um, and plenty more interviews with Bill, his peers um, and the actors behind this whole project. Uh, very cool. Well, I want to thank you both for investing the time, taking the time, sharing your stories, sharing the benefits that are available to veterans and military families. Bill, I, I want to give you a sharp salute, sir. So thank you. Uh, thank you for allowing me the opportunity to serve and, and, and kind of be a part of that whole military experience, too. I mean, we always talk about standing on the shoulders of giants, and that includes those of you who, you know, who served in Vietnam. So thank you, Mike. Sean, to you too. I mean, even though you're Army, and I know the next Army <laughs> Navy game, I might be losing again. I hope not. But uh, hey, but you know what? We we we'll talk trash to each other for the game, and then we'll 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 share some beverages after. You 100%. know, and, and yeah. good fun. So, it's good uh, but fun. I just want to say thank you, uh, Mike, to to what you and, and Operation Military Family are doing. Um, of course, the Northwest, uh, truly, truly remarkable and amazing stuff that you guys are doing. So thank you. Yeah. Well, thank you. Thank you. Well, gentlemen, thank you both. Thank Thanks. You.